Hey Paul, Donny Shuguru from Marathon Handbook here and today we're looking at two of the latest shoes from Asics, the Nimbus 25 and the Gel Keanu 30. Which one's for you? Do you need support? Are you a neutral runner? We're going to check both these shoes out and give you our thoughts. So the Asics Gel Nimbus 25 is the brand's top of the range neutral cushion model. And what's different for the new version is that the visible gel, particularly in the heel, has disappeared. We've still got gel in there, but it's now a new softer, thinner, lighter gel, and it's embedded into the midsole of the shoe. We've got a deep stack of cushioning. It's the flight form cushioning. It's really soft. In terms of responsiveness, it has a little bit of feedback, but really, it's not a highly responsive shoe. It doesn't have the spring that you would get in a competition shoe or a race trainer, like the uh, the Men's Speed Sky or the Men's Speed Edge. It's really soft. You can feel it just soaks up the impact. It's very well cushioned. It is a shoe that you can run simply long, easy miles in and just not worry about it. It's just gonna soak up all that impact. So the Asics Gel Keanu 30. This is a shoe that's for a long time been Asics premier running shoe. It's a support category shoe or structured cushioning as Asics have called it for the last few years. So it's a shoe for over pronators. The new model features big old midsole stack of the FF Blast Plus cushioning material. And that's the same stuff that you'll find in the Nimbus 25. So like the Nimbus, visible gel has gone from the heel and the forefoot and it's been replaced by the new pure gel, the lighter, softer, thinner, and it's embedded within that midsole. Does that gel add to the shoe? You certainly don't notice it. It's a soft cushion feel, particularly on heel strike. It is very thin. I do wonder what the overall effect of it is or the overall benefit could we do without it? You probably wouldn't be able to tell, to be perfectly honest. But the big difference is the removal of the traditional medial post. A posting is still in there, but in the past, medial posts have been a firmer density sitting on the medial side of the shoe under the arch. Now, whilst a post of visible different material is there, it's ASIC's new 4D guiding system. And so it's gonna slow down the rate of our pronation. ASIC say it's a lower density material, Therefore, it's a little bit softer. The particular material they've used is a little bit more propulsive or responsive, propels the foot out of an overpronated state. I think the biggest praise we can give it is the fact that you don't really notice what's going on. The shoe is more stable, five millimeters wider across the full length of the shoe, and that added width and the nice cushioning material, the way your foot sits into the cushioning does provide a lot of stability. So let's take a closer look at it inside. Okay, the Gel Nimbus 25 from Asics, long time being the band's premium neutral cushion shoe. We have done a full review. We'll put a, a link in the corner, but we'll quickly refresh it here and because we're going to look at the differences between the Nimbus and the new Keanu. So the Nimbus is a £175 in the UK, $160 in the US. It comes in at 290 grams, 10.2 ounces, and we've got approximately a 41.5 heel stack in the, uh, in the rear of the shoe here, and 33.5 millimetres deep in the forefoot, so an 8 millimetre drop. Lots of cushioning in there, of course. There's more cushioning than the previous model. It's up by about seven mil higher than the previous model. It's the FF Blast Plus midsole material. So this is a soft cushioned material. We have got gel in there. It's the new pure gel from A6. Gone is the visible gel that was previously exposed here in the heel. Pure gel is lighter, softer. A6 tell us it's now embedded within the shoe. It is only a small piece. You can see some of it um, in some uh, pictures of the shoe. Um, it's a very small piece. I do wonder how much benefit we are seeing from it. 
but the overall the life and home blast plus cushioning is very soft um, and you've certainly got plenty of cushioning on heel strike if you are indeed a heel striker it's a beautifully made upper it is exceptionally comfortable there is lots of padding around the heel collar and i love that the tongue is nice and stretchy and it's an engineered mesh in terms of breathability it's fine i've done some long runs in this um, i didn't have an issue plenty of coverage on the outsole as well slight texture to it so good traction and a wider footprint as you can see throughout the shoe when we compare it to the Kayano 30 the Kayano's the band's top of the range um, structured cushioning control type shoe 180 pounds in the UK 160 dollars in the US we're certainly paying a large premium in the UK for these shoes bear that in mind yes it's always been the most expensive shoe but it's a competitive market and there's a lot of other great shoes around right now anyway i digress let's look at the stats 40 mil of cushioning in the heel 10 mil drop drops to 30 mil in the forefoot it is very similar in terms of stack between the two shoes in fact looking at them here the Keanu actually looks to be slightly deeper they're about the same at around 40 millimeters in the heel with an 8 mil drop in the Nimbus, 10 mil in the Keanu. Keanu slightly heavier, um, just by 13 grams in the same size, 303 grams, 10.6 ounces. Not really noticeable when the shoe's on the foot. FF Blast Plus midsole all the way through and the pure gel embedded in the heel. Four millimeters of additional stack height uh, compared to the previous model. And an important feature, five millimeters wider in the uh, the midsole across the heel midfoot and forefoot so you've got a wider footprint and that is one of the features that adds to the stability because when it comes to stability an important thing is the removal of the medial post you may say what's this asics aren't calling this a medial post there's additional features and this is a 4d guidance system now it just happens to look like a medial post as well as the wider footprint we have got this beveled heel so when you land on the lateral side of the heel as we do your foot lands here this kind of crease crash pad helps keep the foot supinated a little bit as it rolls in we've got guide rails shall we call them as seen on other shoes the cushioning extends up around the medial arch it does lip up on the lateral side of the shoe as well so your foot is embedded it's kind of sinking into the midsole and with it being wider adds stability so the midsole cradles the foot like so kind of sitting inside that reduces excessive movement and then the 4d guidance system this is a lower density material so it's not a firmer medial post it feels actually softer when you squeeze it here compared to the rest of the shoe but it's um, a more responsive feel and it's that responsive kind of spring bike uh, feeling that ASICs say is going to almost propel us out of the overpronated state. I think a lot of the other features do contribute to controlling the shoe in the first instance. And the biggest praise I have for the shoe is the fact that you don't notice what's going on. It just feels a lot more stable. Upper wise, very similar in terms of build quality to the Nimbus. I think the Nimbus has it in terms of quality. On the Nimbus, you have this soft edge and a band of plush cushioning. You can see that sits around the heel. On the Keanu, just got the traditional construction. Yes, there is plenty of plush cushioning around there. The tongue feels a little bit stretchier, a bit, a bit, a bit nicer even on the, uh, the Nimbus. But the rest of the shoe, the construction of the upper, is an engineered mesh breathability is like for like how do they run well the nimbus was launched first i have done more miles in that i've run probably coming up to about 100 miles in the keanu for me i usually wear a slightly supportive shoe that said i found the nimbus very very stable when I moved into the Keanu, yes, I could notice a difference, but the difference is very subtle compared to other support type shoe. That said, I don't have any issues with Keanu. In terms of the overall feel of the shoes, the FF Blast Plus midsole 
It's a very soft, plush, cushioned ride. I don't think it's responsive in the way something like a Zoom X from Nike is responsive. Or the foams in the Saucony shoes um, that can vary Pro, for example. They have a kind of a bouncy, springier feel. And whilst these shoes are very soft and plush, I'm not getting the same level of bounce and, and kind of feedback. So I have been doing my everyday easy miles in these shoes. And when I want a little bit more responsive, going to a lot of the Saucony shoes, we've got a video up about that where I explain the whole range. There's a lot of Saucony shoes that are very responsive and a great selection of, of that kind of type of trainer available from them now. But coming back to these two, yes, very, very comfortable. Perfect for those long, steady miles, easy miles, recovery days, plenty of cushioning and protection. Durability, spot on, very little signs of wear on either of them from me. And in terms of stability, yes, the Kayano has the edge. That said, the days of support and stability shoes are slightly numbered because technology is moving on a little. Shoes are becoming a little bit wider footprints and other stability features are taking the lead and being very effective and controlling over pronation. That said, two great shoes. Hope you like this video. Please leave comments below. Have you tried both these shoes? What do you think about the pricing on the shoes? And what's your favorite easy running everyday mileage shoe at the moment? Are you neutral? Are you support? Which one do you go for? And what's your favorite support shoe? Leave comments. Um, and if you've got any comments about other shoes you'd like to see us review or explain, please do feel free to leave a comment and get in touch. For now, thanks for watching. This is Math and Handbook.